Hello guys and gals. So today I'm going to be reviewing Dead Space 3 for the PlayStation 3 console. It's also on Xbox and PC of course. Um, so where to begin? Uh, first to start things off, let me just let everybody know right now I am a huge fan of Dead Space. Uh, I, I absolutely love this franchise. I think that it's a fantastic franchise. Um, I pretty much, I don't know if there was limited edition of one, but I got limited edition of two and obviously three. Uh, and for me, I, I'm not the biggest of shooter guys. I've, I've admittedly opened out and said that plenty of times. And, uh, basically, yeah, this one to me is, is probably my favorite one right now. Definitely. Um, I love everything about these games. I think that the story and the characters and everything is, is, uh, so well done, and, and it's almost like they put it first, but they don't because the gameplay is so damn good in all of these. So, basically, I'm not going to go on a whole thing and explain the whole entire series of Dead Space to you. The only things I will get to is the general gist, which is that they're very much survival horror games set in space, and you fight these things called the Necromorphs, and they're usually uh, infected humans that were hit with this bacteria from different aliens that came from a giant marker that all these different people are basically fighting over for various reasons, be it some kind of a crazy religious thing or, you know, basically uh, trying to study it or whatever it's going to be. There's always some kind of a reason for why these things are still around. But then obviously if you play through all the games, the stories unfold and it gets pretty damn crazy. But, um, yeah, basically Dead Space 3 is kind of like the the black sheep of the group because basically this franchise is run by EA and anything that EA usually touches um you know usually they'll have their way with it and try to add some kind of a general twist luckily the first two games were kind of more generalized uh survival horror experiences uh you know in the dark you don't know what the hell is going to pop out these guys are attacking you got to separate their limbs with guns and stuff but this one obviously if you haven't been reading reviews is much more action oriented and that's not necessarily a bad thing is it a little disappointing at first sure fine but if you progress through the game, it, there are moments where it, it does have the horror and there are good moments in the game that, that make it worthwhile as a uh, fan of the series or just someone that wants to get into Dead Space or whatever it's going to be. Um, I mean, I will come out and say that it is not my favorite one of the group by far, but it's definitely a great game uh, in the sense that this developer, Visceral, uh, Visceral Games, is just pushing the bar on what they can do with these systems because i mean you go through uh like i said you know it's it's in the uh i think it's the the t year 23 something it's like in the future and i mean you're in space half the time you're in these futuristic cities there's like planets and stars and meteorites and glares and oh man it's crazy like how vivid they they get the details just right um, the gameplay in this game is so damn good because they they made like in the the original games Isaac is an engineer of course so he's in this very heavy suit since he's in space and there's moments where you're in gravity and whatever you you have to do puzzles and that kind of sense but you're very heavy and the big thing is is like you could stomp and punch as well as obviously shoot your guns and weapons and whatever you got but you know, throughout all the games, they've gradually kind of made Isaac go from, like, this very heavy character to kind of, like, a balance of the two where, he, yeah, he's a little heavy because of he, where he is and what he's wearing, but it's also because, like, okay, you know, with gameplay things and whatnot, they're going to make it a lot more uh, of a smoother transition, if you will. So, yeah, in this game, probably by far the best gameplay they've ever had, uh, hands down. The dodge rolls are quicker. I don't know if they had dodge rolls in the second game. They might have, but I don't think you were able to strafe to the other rolls i don't remember uh you know just the way that the gun comes out and, and all that stuff the reloads everything is so much more smoother it, it is a great way to to end the series on the current gen generation of consoles i'll say that on a gameplay spectrum uh you still have all your stuff but they definitely did change a lot in the first two games you have a shop and a bench system and a suit kiosk now the shop system is exactly what you think it is you buy uh health packs you buy all kinds of stuff like that. Benches is where you upgraded your guns, and the suit kiosks is where you change your suits to different things. Now, in Dead Space 3, they completely scrapped some of that those concepts. They brought back the suit kiosk because you need the suit kiosk. It's like a key ingredient to the game because you can swap between different costumes, suits, excuse me, and stuff like that. But 
The bench has become something completely different. You can now craft any kind of gun you want. It is a really awesome concept. I, I think that that is cool to know that I can make some kind of a gun, let's say an assault rifle that shoots, you know, obviously assault rifle, bullet, but, but, uh, assault rifle bullets, but then I could like, I don't know, I could add electricity, I could add whatever fire. And then at the bottom half, I can turn it into like a contact beam, which shoots a giant blast or a flamethrower. It's basically like whatever the frig you want to make. It, it, it's it's a great idea. The other thing is, is you can craft items and, and you need particular items to build uh, those items and chips to upgrade your guns even further. So it's kind of like a complex system in that sense. You also use those little items that you're finding to also build your build up your suit. Now, to me, while in theory it's cool to build your own guns, I found this concept kind of flawed because there is a lot of things that you have to look for to build stuff. And they give you these little scavenger bots that help you out, but not by much because obviously they don't want the game to be so easily handed to you but at the same time i can't help but feel like i missed just simply having basic weapons that they came up with or tools because they're really tools they're not even weapons uh some of them were and you know upgrade them and and, and that sort of thing and, and and just have the shop back i love the novelty of the shop i'm not even saying this with you know the tinted glasses saying oh i missed this from the first two games i think that 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 felt natural to have shops in that world because it's it's the future and I expect to be able to buy shit anywhere I go. So to me, I think finding all these things and crafting packs and all this, I, I didn't need that much stuff. It was cool to make a gun, but I don't I felt like that should have been more of an optional ability rather than uh, uh, something tacked onto the game. Um, since the game is more action based, they implemented a co-op version of the game. So they introduced this new character named John Carter. Carver, John Carver, so John Carter, that's funny. And uh, basically, you find out his story about how he lost his family and all this stuff and how he was a military guy. I didn't really, I'm, you know, I haven't done the co-op yet, but he seemed like a cool character. And so basically, you can now have co-op in Dead Space. They removed the multiplayer from the other game. And uh, yeah, basically, the the general feeling is, is that they put that in to implement, uh, I guess, a higher sense of action and, and, and more... Uh, you know, not just you playing by yourself in the dark or whatever. Um, the story in this game is good. I think that it was a good way to finish off the trilogy, per se. Am I leading towards something? I don't know. You'll have to play it. Um, but at the same time, I also feel like the pacing and the general uh, continuity of the story was very all over the place. Yeah, some people will argue that, listen, maybe you should have read the text more. Let me tell you something. Every single one of these games, I put the subtitles on, literally, because I, I want to make sure I don't miss a damn thing. Uh, you know, I play with the lights off and do the whole atmospheric thing, and let me tell you that I've kept up with all these stories pretty damn good up until this point, even when it's all a little bit of confusion stuff here and there. This story to me in the third game was was probably the most stretched and, and definitely a jump to shark moment in some regards towards the end of the game. Um, I mean, honestly, it, I got it. You know, by the end of it, I started, you know, putting it all together in my head and whatever. But to me, uh, when someone like who's a new player might play this or something, they're going to be completely lost, even with the recap that they implemented in the game that talks about the first two games. So to me, it, that, that was something that was kind of a missed opportunity was to better handle the story. I think that they, they could have handled it a little better. The villain, however, uh, Danik wants to say, he's cool. He's a very good villain. You'll like him and you'll hate him, obviously, at the same time. There's a lot of mixed things going on in this game. There's like a love triangle. Obviously, they're trying to find out what's the, the ultimate marker that's controlling all these necromorphs and issues. You finally get to see Isaac Clarke outside of the occurrences, seeing how his life is and what he goes through on a daily basis. There's stuff like that. Um... You know, it's it's a it's a great game, um, in a sense that if, if if you're not looking for scares, it is it is fun. You know, it is a fun game. Um, you know, aside from that, there's also one other thing I, I do want to touch on. They made the necromorphs in this game a lot more tougher, and it's a good and bad thing because for for me, I felt like the the some of the scariness in the first two games was because of the fact that there were so sparse necromorphs being shot at you, and you really did not know where they were coming from. Now you see vents are like almost everywhere, and it's a little more predictable. And you're seeing packs of them. It's not even just like uh, three of them, let's say. There's like fucking ten of them coming at you at once. And to me, this got a little t uh, tedious uh, because you know. 
I want it to be realistic. I don't need hordes of guys coming at me to get a thrill or a sense of adventure, or action, whatever. I, I want it to be scary enough that, you know, even two dudes scared the living shit out of me as opposed to ten. Because when there's a pack of them, I think of, like, Left 4 Dead or something. So to me, I think that was another thing. And they made them so... Uh, resilient to bullets now that it's not as fun killing them as, as I felt yeah okay fine they made the game more challenging and maybe I'm a little butthurt about it fine but you know what honestly I, I like just two shotting something and killing it um, they should if that was the case they should have just made much stronger versions because I felt like every one of them was taking more bullets than needed to they have these um, these guys I don't know what they're called they're almost like skeleton packs now and, and or imps or something and I mean they're nothing. They're like bones, people. And they take like four bullets. I mean, I sh would shotgun them and they would get up. I mean, it was a little too much for me at, at some points. And the other thing is, um, the music, everything about this game atmospherically was done right. The particles, the snow looks great, uh, the cities look great, the space, everything, they, they always do great on that. And the music's always great too, but the problem with this was that they synced the music at wrong spots. So when Isaac would go around to different areas, um, even if he wasn't near where the necromorphs, necromorphs would spawn, the music would start kicking in and completely ruin the element of surprise. I get it. I understand they're trying to do more of an action thing, but give me a fucking break. And my my biggest complaint is is that uh, uh, this is the last one I promise is is that this game very heavily relies on quick time events. And some of them are cool, don't get me wrong. I think climbing up mount, uh, snowy mountains or even shooting down them with guys shooting at you, because there's obviously guys after you besides necromorphs, and necromorphs coming after you is exciting. But when you keep doing it, it's like, I just, I can't help but feel like there's, I don't know, there's just, it's just not as, as realistic to me. Um, they implemented this system uh, of, of missions in this game as well. Isaac has his own, and you could do your co-op missions with Carver, and they, there's more story to unfold. Um, they're generally... They're kind of a mix. There's, um, I think there's like 10 of them or something. And I would say that there's more good ones than bad ones. I will say that. There was a couple that I felt were kind of like whatevers. But then the one, I think the ones by the later and the end of the game were good. There was one that recycled a little bit of, of some territory in the same chapter. I think it was nine or something. But yeah, for the most part, the, the, the later ones are pretty damn good, actually. I enjoyed those. So those were a nice transition from, okay, I get at the action thing, to like, okay, we get a little bit of the survival horror feel back. So all in all, not as bad as people are saying, but definitely to me the weakest one, and not by that much, but you know, only because it was so action-y. Uh, I highly recommend this game to anybody who wants to get into Dead Space, wants a good shooter, wants something fun, or, you know, obviously he's a fan, I don't know if I said that. And uh, you really should check it out anyway. Check them all out. They're all great games. Gotta, gotta check them. Gotta catch them all. Yeah, anyways. Uh, that's it. Peace out, guys. Woo!